this case from Q101 here, a case for a show in which we dive into the world of underground and emerging artists. Uh, more often than not here, we are talking to the exciting bands making up the exciting Chicago music scene. And today is no different. It is my pleasure to welcome to the Q101 Lounge, Axel from Axe and the Hatch Event. How are you? Hello, hello. Thank you for having me, dude. I'm uh, doing well. I'm delighted. You, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to say it all right off the bat. Boyish good looks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, uh, I deal with a lot of people on these couches. Maybe deal is not the right word. I talk to a lot of people on these couches. Haggard. Beat off. <laughs> They've been around the block a time or two. Not you. Well, I lived down the block, so I got to shower. You know, I'm not on tour. All so right, I, good. Yeah, I wasn't at the Comfort Inn this morning, like, be trying to get in a race for seven guys in the shower. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was all good. Can I ask how old are you? 21. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. All right. Well, that sucks, because I'm 25, and I have a... I haven't done much with my life. This is not good. This is making me feel bad. You woke up at 3.30. You're doing well. Uh, thank you. I, I, look, I, I'm incredibly accomplished here, I say. But, uh, you know, it's taken... This didn't used to look like this. At one point, I looked like you. Boyish, <laughs> handsome, something to live for. <laughs> not anymore. This is all I got. Get out of town, man. Oh, my goodness. Well, it is, it is delightful to have you here. You guys have a show this upcoming Friday at Thalia Hall. Tickets still available for that. That is going to be a fun one. You guys have new music out. We'll talk about that in just a second. I'm so curious about your band, the sound that you guys have let out into the masses. It's a delightful one, let me say, first of all. I really like it. But it is, it is very unique. A lot of different instrumentation. Uh, it feels like you're pulling from a lot of different influences in a way that really intrigues me. Taking back to young Axel, younger than you are now, in your childhood home, what were some of the first sounds and bands that you remember maybe your parents showing you and then you latching onto yourself? Sure. Um, well, it was all Beatles and Stones for like a lot. Um, just like that's what my dad would play around the house um, all the time. He would like sing Beatles songs <laughs> before I went to bed or whatever. So it was, it was kind of was brought up on like old British invasion stuff. Um, and then, uh, yeah, kind of like blues started coming in. Um, my dad always listened to like, um, just like Chicago blues. He was he listened to more like Led Zeppelin and kind of like rock bands that were inspired by blues, but started finding the blues world on like going to just pubs and like doing gigs wherever. And uh, yeah, that's where we kind of got our roots, um, classic rock and blues kind of stuff. For sure. Did you ever at any point during maybe your uh, rebellious teenage years find yourself straying away from that? Is there anything that you've ever been like, Dad, this is what I like, and he stiff arms it and says, not for me? Um, you know, yeah. Like, I mean, I like, you know, certain certain genres that we don't play or whatever, maybe he won't be as keen to, but um, not really. I, I got into, like, just indie kind of bedroom rock in high school. Um, once I started listening to, like, Hippocamp, it was, it was all over for me. Um, that was... That was what I wanted to do. They were my second concert ever at Bocamp. Really? First okay. concert was Nickelback. Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> I, I like them and respect them, but I okay. don't throw them on that often. <laughs> uh, They're not in the van when you guys are on tour? Not generally. That's too bad. Sometimes. Usually just live biscuit. Oh, is that right? <laughs> oh, just my goodness. Days. Oh, welcome in, my friend. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, at, at any point uh, during your musical career, have you attempted to do any new metal like Lip Biscuit? Has there ever been a time where you're like, I... I feel like this is my calling. This is what I'm going to do. Um, not yet. <laughs> not <laughs> is that, is that not the next thing? I don't know that I can sell it well. I'm not angry enough. Well, the, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> All right, trust me. We're going to talk about your emotions. But uh, is it, do you think it would be the screaming part or the rapping part that you would have a hard time with? I think, uh, I don't know. I think the combination. Mm -hmm. I think because I could, I could scream a little and I could try and rap a little. So I, I think both together would, would give me a route to my money. Good, good. <laughs> you mentioned being a happy guy. I try. Okay, so this is this is where we went wrong, right? Yeah. So uh, I, I put on to your music, uh, you know, within the last few months. It's just delightful. I was so happy to have you in. But all I could think when I when I started listening to you guys was, God, they seem happy. And again, some of the, some of the people I talked to, tortured. <laughs> maniacs just absolute monsters good humans but just monsters with the the art they put out what are you hiding oh man um well not too much you can listen to the songs a lot of them sound happy but the lyrics are sad a lot of the time <laughs> um and so i there's a juxtaposition there that i enjoy because it's like oh you, we, i still want to dance and have fun but like give my shit out <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, I don't know. um yeah um but yeah no that's 
Mm -hmm. All right. Generally, you're, you're a very happy guy? Trying to be, you know. I, I think uh, I'm just inspired to write music that's happy, even if I'm having a tough time or something. I generally end up writing things that are happier, I think, as a therapeutic thing for me. Um, but then I also like that in turn it becomes like a like a, a Friday night kind of dance band sound, which I think is fun. Um, I think you I think you guys accomplished that with your most recent single, Where the F is My Car, <laughs> a, del a delightful jaunty tune, dare I say. Well, thank you. I know this is something you guys have been performing live for a while before it was finally released. Can you mm -hmm. talk to me about the creation of this song, uh, how it came to be, and the eventual output of it, which again, I, I quite like. Yeah, well, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, so me and a friend wrote it, like, I don't know, a year and a half ago or so. Um, but yeah, it was just about losing our cards. We kept- It's uh, very literal, right? No metaphor there? No, there's no, there's no <laughs> metaphor there. Um, I kept getting towed in like my freshman year of college a few times and just tickets and whatever for being stupid. And um, yeah, my friends were, were getting their cars, the, just losing their cars. Like, and then we kind of found that there was a, an attachment to our stories in which we often messed up with our cars while rushing to like go to a date um, or to catch a date because we were running late. And so I would either just not pay it if the meter was broken or something, then I'd come back and my car is gone. And uh, yeah, it was just damn annoying. It feels like a humble brag. Let me tell you, all the parking tickets I've received, not because I was going to pay. <laughs> it's been a solo endeavor every time I've gotten a ticket. <laughs> I guess a stupid brag if anything. It's like, I cut my $270 less and how <laughs> much the day cost him, but yeah. That's what I want to know is, think about all the parking tickets you've gotten in your life. How much money do you think that adds up to? Too much, but probably, probably like, I don't know, close to $700. Oh my at, God. More than I wanted oh, to pay oh, for no. Honey, what yeah. are we doing? It was it was two towing times. They're like two hundred and seventy. You've been towed twice? Yeah, I've been towed twice. That's what that that's, that's we wrote this song. Oh. Stop it. That's, that's what the song's about. I know, I'm a fan of the song, but now I gotta really dive into these lyrics. <laughs> we I didn't were, so much. Right? We were pissed enough to write it and then record it and put it out. Yeah. I got news for you. I don't have seven hundred dollars on me. If I did, I'd give it to you. If I if I metaphorically gave you seven hundred dollars, what would you spend that money on? Um Mm -hmm. Is it one of those dispensaries? Ah, oh, is that right? All right. All right. All right. All right. I didn't know you're cool like that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I don't know. I probably spent it on a, a show. I heard, um, uh, who was it that was, I forgot who was playing last weekend, but I wanted to see him. Anyway. So, ah, that's too bad. Yeah, I would, I'd I'd go, I'd go to a concert. concert. Yeah, I'd go to a concert. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, we went to the same college. We did? Columbia College, Chicago. Yeah, we did. Shouts out, Renegades. How hard is it? Because I know this from people I live with, people I hung out with. I was uh, not in the music department, but certainly I, I tried to cozy up to a lot of people there. How hard is it being a college student and also being in a touring band? It was difficult. Um, yeah, it wasn't the easiest thing. Um, just because there's a, like a, I don't know, it's, it's kind of a feeling of you're either going to be in school and learn how to do what you want to do um, when you get out of it, and um, I was kind of already doing something I was happy with doing. And uh, yeah, and it was it was kind of just like a push and pull, like, well, you're supposed to learn that here. Uh, and I'm like, well, I'm kind of learning it. Um, it's just, yeah, it was like, a, it was hard to manage both things. And I wanted to be a really good and, uh, you know, keep my head in the game in, in school. Um, that was difficult. And uh, yeah, I, I dropped out like just this last semester. You didn't graduate? I didn't. I went three and a half years and did not Oh graduate. my God, what are you? You're at the <laughs> like finish line. Yeah. yeah, I know. I had, I just had some projects coming up that I had to take off for. And so I, I hope to finish. I hope oh, to go back and finish. Baby, but... you're not, you're never going to. You I, were I, so close. There's no point in going back now. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I'm, I'm hoping I can drudge through, take some online classes. What, what, what kind of GTA were we looking at? I don't know. I was doing all right. Okay, all right. Because I, I had a three nine. I was I was crushing. I, I wasn't that. I was okay, like, I was right. like a three five, three six. Respectable. Something. Around there. Certainly seems like something you would have been able to finish. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's possible. Obviously, being from here, you're from Lake Villa. You you uh, did your college years at Columbia. Last year, you guys played Lollapalooza. Am I correct in that assessment? Right. Yes, sir. That is wonderful. Uh, I heard great things about your set. You guys seem to crush. I missed it because I was. Probably you know being on the bands at the time, but tell me, uh, being a local uh, and being able to play in Grant Park, what did that mean to you last year? Oh, that was, it meant the world. Yeah, you know, right. Like, yeah, we would always 
for years prior to the fest, we would bike to the lakefront and kind of like watch it across, you know, Lakeshore Drive. I remember watching Post Malone set. I saw a couple songs of Journey. Um, yeah, no, it's just like that was always fun watching the fireworks from there. It was a lifelong dream. And like I, most of us had never been to the fest, so it was all except for one person. It was our first time just being there in general. Um, and so we were just beyond stoked, dude. It was like growing up in Chicago, that's like the fest you always hear about. And it, it meant so much. We were so happy. Good. You happy with the set? Um, yeah, it went well. I, uh, we went a couple minutes over and that was my fault. But um, yeah, it was. besides that, it was great. Okay, so explain this to me because like uh, when we were at Riot Fest this past year, on the Sunday day of Riot Fest, it rained. Mm. And in order to keep things on schedule, they just cut half the bands that were playing that day. Ooh. And now I found out they still got paid, which is cool. Cool. But would, with yeah. festivals, there is such a strict, uh, this is when you're on, this is when you're over, mm -hmm. no questions asked. Oh, yeah. You go a few minutes over at Lala, does anybody get in your ear and be like, hey, you can't do that? No, it was too loud. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, no, I, I only went like two over. No one was really tripping. It was early in the day. I think it was okay. It was the first day of the fest. Good, 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 good. I think I had a, a little slack on that one, but yeah. Let me ask you this. I know we talked about music you grew up with uh, earlier, but I'm going to circle back to that. Who was your favorite artist as a kid? Um, the, as a kid, probably the Beatles. Okay. I know that's a basic answer. No, nothing but... wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, have you had a moment, whether it's at Lala or elsewhere, where you're on stage and all of those feelings of like, I want to be a rock star. I want to be like somebody in the Beatles. Have you had a moment like that on stage where you go like, oh my God, I'm doing it. I'm doing the thing. Um, I don't know. I, first of all, I, I got to say Cage the Elephant too. That was one of my favorite. Wonderful. That, that's a good band to emulate. They were my soundtrack growing up. Is I, it appropriate to say you kind of look like Nash Alter Singer? I'll take it. Yeah. I've never gotten that before. I feel like you do. Cute. Yeah, he's a good looking guy. <laughs> I love that man. I used to learn all the drum parts. All there, all Is that right? Like, oh, How many instruments do you play? Um, well, just like guitar and sing. But like I, I taught myself drums just in my garage. Okay, you can't flex. Oh, I just taught right. myself drums. That's a, that I'm not like I'm not too. good. I try. Yeah, I listen to enough Cage the Elephant to get through it. And it sounds like you're uh, uh, who was uh, Ringo Starr? Is that the drum? <laughs> I don't know the Beatles it's at the all. Beatles drum. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, no, that, that I don't know that feeling. Uh, it just always feels. Like we're doing something really fun. Uh, feels just, right, like it's what you should be doing. Yeah, I don't know that it feels like uh, I'm in a different band or like aspiring to do what these people I looked up to did. Like certainly I am trying to do that, but um, yeah, I think just looking at my friends and like just the the room and uh, it's it feels special. Um, yeah, it, not in a comparative way. It's just for yeah. sure. For sure. Here's I think what everybody wants to know. When's the full worth album coming out? What, when, are, when are we getting this album? Dude, we are, we're working on one. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not sure how it'll be released quite yet. There'll probably be some more singles that come out. Maybe we'll do an EP. You know, these days, like, maybe we'll do an EP. Maybe we'll do a <laughs> single. Maybe five singles. Is this, um, is this what you're constantly being approached with? Is this the music <laughs> industry? Maybe we'll do an EP. Hey, maybe we'll do an EP. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, there will be an album eventually. We're about, I don't know what I should say, whatever. We're about like half done recording it. Um, we're working on it. Though. That's that's the important on. part? Yeah, we're working on Good. it. Good. I so want more. Works. There will be an album. Good. You've already it's given enough. so much, but I, you know consumers. I just want more. It's all about me now. <laughs> make me feel good, okay? <laughs> we want more too. We want to make more. <laughs> there we go. Well, uh, you've been an absolute delight. Thank you, man. Uh, again, I want to reemphasize Axe and the Hatchet, but they're going to be at Thalia Hall. That is this coming Friday, if you're listening to this the week that it comes out. That's uh, well, March 29th? Yes, sir. Hell oh, yeah. Please come on. Please come. Tickets available at Thalia Hall's website. Axel, it's been an absolute delight. Appreciate you, man. Likewise. Thank, Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Q101.